hi everybody this is julissa thank you so much everyone for coming back to my channel thank you for everybody who listens in the podcast whichever platform you use to listen to this podcast i want to thank you please don't forget to follow me on the spotify platform as well as subscribe on the apple podcast thank you so much everybody for um coming back to listen to this podcast and watching on youtube so today i'm going to tell you about this story that when i first heard about it i was like this is just amazing it's it's kind of bittersweet but the good thing that is that when we know when a person goes missing right what a what a nightmare for everybody involved and mostly um not only for the person who is perhaps kidnapped but also for the parents the family members right it's a very tragic situation and let me tell you something guys kidnap and adoptions i guess you can say is happening more than ever it's happening more often you know um i don't know what year it was not too long ago 2019 probably um i remember hearing about the the story of dulce from new jersey i believe it was the young girl who went to the um to the gas station with her cousins and her mom to buy ice cream then they headed to the park and dulce was never found you know she hasn't been found we pray that she is found you know i definitely think that she is still alive and that somebody knows something so randomly i will find myself thinking about her you know it's so tragic um and there's so many other cases. I remember years ago when I heard about Elizabeth Smart and her disappearance and then for her sister to also randomly uh, remember about that guy who used to come to the uh, to the home, the family home and do work. And she just went into her, fam- uh, her dad's, uh, mom and dad's room and said, what happened, uh, you guys, check emmanuel he's the one who took elizabeth i will never forget that and then that's how they were able to find her i guess you know the minute they thought of somebody they're like oh yeah he was a little strange you know he had he known the children he has been in the house doing work so the elizabeth Mar story you know i remember when they found her it was just amazing and now i'm going to tell you about this story about like i said when i heard it I just couldn't believe it because a lot of the times, a lot of missing people's cases, you know, I I had covered for many days the Jennifer Dulos disappearance and everything that has happened to her. People, you know, I mean, people don't just disappear. Somebody's seen something and somebody knows something and they have, they're probably too afraid to come forward. And we just pray, you know, that whoever is out there who, you know it's affected by a missing person case that it comes you know they find the family member and that somebody will come forward with information right so the story that i'm going i'm going to tell you about is his name is omar bin omra who disappeared listen to these guys he disappeared from a city called uh the jolfa i might be mispronouncing that so excuse me and this is located in algeria this young man guys disappeared in 1997 that's why you can never give up a missing uh, person you can never give up somebody knows something right this young man um was disappeared in 97 he was just found on sunday so about a week ago he was found and guess what he was living like within feet of his family home kidnapped by a neighbor this is how crazy this is why i have you know people always i i mentioned flattery and people want to tell you what you want to hear because you have to be aware people you know when people are so like um i'm not saying to not trust people just hear me out but be aware that people are like with their kindness they want to they want something from you a lot of the times, you know, they want to flatter you up basically, especially watch out for the people that you just recently met. And it's like, they, you just met them and they immediately love you. You're like, hold on, no, you don't, you don't know me yet. Like what's happening. 
This young man was kidnapped by their own neighbor. The same thing with Elizabeth Smart, right? A man who was offered work by her dad. So that that man, Emmanuel, the, the kidnapper of Elizabeth Smart, so that that man can buy food and, and have, you know, have something to eat with his family. Then he turns around and does that to, to Elizabeth, right? The daughter of the person who found him work. That's why you have to watch out. I'm not saying not to do a good thing, nothing like that, you know, but don't be so quick to trust people so fast. Um, and always ask God for discernment. So let me read to you guys this story. A teenager who was kidnapped 27 years ago has now been fine alive, living in the cellar of his neighbors. Um, the victim, his name is Omar bin Omra, disappearing uh, from a city in Algeria in 1997, and his family thought that he has been killed during the Algerian Civil War, which began at the end of 1991 and ended in 2002. All these times, 27 years, this family was grieving his disappearance, was um, crying and always wondering whatever happened to his to their son, and thought, you know, he he died in the war, you know, and all this time, this young man was living right in their neighbor's home, kidnapped by this man who lived alone. Um, so he's now the Omar, uh, the guy who got kidnapped, he's now 40, uh, 45 and was saved from the basement below his neighbors. Um, and it was all covered by hay over the weekend. His accuser is a 61 year old man who lived alone and had been arrested and is in police custody at the moment. Omar, they say, never called for help over the past 27 years as it, he had been convinced by his captor. Um, well, Omar is saying that he, he never asked for help, even though he was so close to his house, because he, he has been convinced that his captor had a cast a magic spell on him. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people might not believe on something like that, but <laughs> manipulation, guys, a person who manipulates you has only one objective and it's to get their way, if, to force you to do what they want. And just, a, you know, people call it manipulation, but that's called witchcraft. When somebody manipulates you to the point to basically force you to do something that you don't want, that is a form of witchcraft and, you know, kind of having dominion over you. So those are things that you have to look out for. This is here. He said he was sometimes, this is, this is how the manipulation was. And, it, you know, the crazy thing about this story, it didn't happen to like an eight-year-old girl. It happened to a teenager by his neighbor. So he said he will sometimes see his family members walk by through a window. So he was, I mean, he's the he was living in the neighbor's house, in the cellar of the neighbor's home. He will see his family members sometimes walk through by a window in, in, the, in his adapter's home, but wasn't able to speak or call out to them as he was under some type of spell. So that's that's what it, that is the full effect of man, somebody manipulating you. Um, and you know you know it's wrong. You know that's not your will, but you still because you have been probably um. You know how they um they threaten you. You probably were threatened by them that you know what to do, but you still are so um immobile to do it because of the threatening, um. The, the brainwashing that happens, the full-on manipulation. And that is so dangerous. And there's so many people who do that these days. This young man was a, a victim of this, um, of this type of manipulation by the neighbor for 27 years. 
and you see people manipulating you at workplaces, uh, you know, even like in relationships that you might have. They don't care what you think. They don't care how you feel about something. It's like they will, um, you know, manipulation can come in, in many different forms, you know. They'll do, they'll guilt trip you into doing something. And if you say, no, I don't want to do well, you are definitely a horrible person. There's no negotiating. When somebody wants to manipulate you to the point that you, you are basically forced to do what they want, they care less about what you think on the situation. So it's, it's, it's a very um, demonic thing to do to somebody. And people engage on this like it's nothing. People engage on this like it's nothing. They want to get their way and they don't care how you feel. They don't care about anything. Say like, this is the way that said. Obviously, I'm not referring to somebody who has a boss who's very strict. Although you do have to look out for um, bullying at the workplace. You know, that's something else differently that leads to people manipulating you also. But it's something like, um, you know, you have an option. As an adult, you have an option to pick and choose what you want to do. But the minute they, you're not picking what they want you to do, then you are the problem. You are um, crazy. And they start name-calling you, guilt-tripping you, and basically forcing you to do something that you never wanted to do. Like, how does anybody feel guilt, uh, uh, feel happy about forcing them by somebody to do something that they don't want to do unless they're definitely being influenced by the, the enemy? Because manipulation is extremely demonic, guys. Stay away from that. And if you see that on somebody, you know, even bring it to the table and start praying for that person because they're definitely being oppressed. So this young man kidnapped for 27 years, found a life this past Sunday, living on the on the neighbor's cellar. He, this young man, uh, his family thought he was already dead. I mean, 27 years. And... This neighbor probably seen the family and saying, you know, because people say this a lot. They're like, oh, we're praying for you so that he can come home. And whenever, when they wouldn't see anything, you know, I can, I'm sure the, 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 the family went to the neighbor's home and gave like flyers or something. That's usually what people do when somebody goes missing. Um, I'm sure the neighbor was probably like, um, I think all concerns because that's another thing that's going on. People will fake it right in your face. And 2024 is the year of exposure. I've been saying that many times. And there's nothing hidden that's not going to come to light. They can pretend all their life. They can hide it very well. They can charm other people to believe what they want. It will at some point come to the surface. Okay. Um, Let me see what else information I can find here. A court official said two days ago, May 12, 2024, they received a complaint against an anonymous person, person, excuse me, claiming that the uh, the complainant's brother, Omar bin Omra, who has been missing for about 30 years, is in the house of one of his neighbors inside a cheap fall. Following the report, the prosecutor um, ordered the national uh, investigation officers to go to the house and question that. The missing person was found and the suspect, the 61-year-old owner of the house, was arrested. While other family members, Toro Mar, was killed during the Civil War, his mom was convinced he was still alive. See, the moms know. Like, your mom will know. Um, but sadly, says here in 2013, without ever knowing the truth about what happened to her son, one of her nine children, she died in 2013. The mom. How did how did this man? How did you? How does that neighbor feel about himself? Like you know that he's definitely oppressed by the enemy. Like this is your call for life. You're gonna kidnap your neighbor's kid, keeping um under a spell, under manipulation, keep this teenage man, rob him basically of his life, 
lie to the family, lie to the family, see the mom probably walking, looking all sad, seeing the family probably falling apart all these years and not say anything. That tells you can never, like, people will will portray to be something that they're not. That's why you can never go by. I, I think I made a video about, um, I made a video about that Instacart lawsuit. People say, you know, who doesn't like dogs? Whoever doesn't like dogs is a bad person. That's what makes somebody good. That's why you have to go deeper than the surface. You know, you have to look for fruit. What, you know, because there are a lot of people who like dogs and that doesn't necessarily mean that they are good people. You know, there's a lot of people who abuse them. So you have to go deeper. You have to go deeper than what you see. If you really want to get to know somebody, a lot of times one thing that you can do is to, to, to hear them out. People always rebuild who they are. You have to hear them out. Um, have a conversation with them, you know. I'm not saying the first conversation would tell you, but, you, you know, the people speak. But but the, what's the, the verse says, um, whatever the heart is full of, the mouth speak. So it's a matter of time, right? Let me see here what else I can tell you about this. Um, he said here, this young man was always being washed by the perpetrator and could not do anything. He was completely uh, under full on manipulation by this man. Uh, Omar said he often often saw his father going to the mosque and was aware of a number of updates about the family, including that his mom died. Oh my goodness! So, wow, that's how close the house was. That's how close the house was. Was this young man probably looking on to the neighbor where his family lived? And probably from the basement, looking on and seeing, you know, um, anything that he can get about his family. And still unable to ask for help because the manipulation was so, um, so big that he said, you know, I was, he, he's saying he was probably under spell because he will, he probably saw opportunities where he can ask for help and he couldn't do it. Because when a manipulative manipul uh, manipul person, they not only get in your head and threaten you, but they make you feel like, um, you know, after some years, they're like, oh, your family's not even looking for you. Like, why are you even, what would you want to escape, you know? It's so crazy. But, you know, like I said, it's a bittersweet story. I'm glad that, he's, that he was able, it's almost like he gets a second chance, a freedom, a life. Um, he get to be reunited with his family. Yes, he's probably gonna need a lot of therapy. Um, he doesn't know Christ. I hope you know that somebody will preach him the gospel of Jesus Christ, where he can definitely find true freedom. And for that kidnapper, man, wow, he you know God have mercy. I also hope that he comes to the feet of Jesus. Let me know what you guys think about this case, and if you remember any, um, any missing person case that you that sticks to your mind like leave it in the comments thank you so much everybody for coming back to my channel and listening in the podcast have a good day god bless